Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of our discussion is Hepatitis D. So Hepatitis D is caused by a specific virus known as Delta virus or Hepatitis D virus. One particular thing about Hepatitis D virus is that it is dependent on Hepatitis B virus for its life cycle. Therefore, it always occurs in the presence of Hepatitis B virus infection. So Hepatitis D virus infection occurs as either co-infection in which case Hepatitis B virus and Hepatitis D virus are together acquired by the serum resulting in infection. Co-infection occurs in almost 5 to 10 percent of the cases and the other way is that Hepatitis D virus causes a super infection in pre-existing Hepatitis B virus infection. Super infection is more common and it occurs almost in 90 percent of the cases. So Hepatitis D virus is actually an RNA virus and it is enveloped. The mode of transmission of Hepatitis D virus is same as Hepatitis B virus which includes IV drug abuse, infected needles and surgical equipment, transfusion of unscreened blood and unprotected sexual intercourse. So Hepatitis D virus infection occurs in two ways. The first and less common way is co-infection with Hepatitis B virus. Co-infection occurs due to transfusion of serum that contains both Hepatitis B virus and Hepatitis D virus. Co-infection is less common and occurs in almost 5 to 10 percent of the cases. The more common way is super infection to pre-existing Hepatitis B virus infection which occurs in almost 90 percent of the cases. The super infection has actually two phases. The first is the acute phase and the second is chronic phase. In the acute phase, there is increased Hepatitis D virus replication and ALT and AST levels are also increased. The next comes the chronic phase in which there is increased Hepatitis B virus replication. Moreover, there is a decrease in Hepatitis D virus replication and in these cases, the disease mostly progresses to liver cirrhosis. So simultaneous infections of Hepatitis B virus and Hepatitis D virus leads to acute Hepatitis. Acute Hepatitis in this case is extremely severe and recovery occurs with the resolution of Hepatitis B virus infection. In rare cases, simultaneous infection might also progress to chronic Hepatitis. The super infection in chronic carriers of Hepatitis B virus causes acute Hepatitis which mostly recovers spontaneously and also there is cessation of chronic Hepatitis B. In certain cases, the patient becomes a chronic carrier of Hepatitis B virus and Hepatitis D virus. The chronic infection leads to rapid progression to chronic liver failure and ultimately to liver cirrhosis. So Hepatitis D virus RNA is detected in the serum before and in the early days of the infection. The most reliable test for the detection of Hepatitis D virus is IgM anti-HDV antibodies. In simultaneous infection, these antibodies appear within few days and last for almost two months. Super infection in chronic Hepatitis B leads to high titers of anti-HDV antibodies in the serum. Initially, these antibodies are IgM and over time, these IgM antibodies are replaced by IgG antibodies. This indicates the progression of disease to chronic liver failure and liver cirrhosis. In most cases, IgM anti Hepatitis D virus antibodies and Hepatitis B surface antigen antibodies are measured together. If HDV antibodies are elevated, this indicates an acute phase of Hepatitis D virus infection. If both anti-HTV antibodies and anti-HBS antigen antibodies are elevated, this indicates a chronic state. Since Hepatitis D virus is dependent upon Hepatitis B virus for its life cycle, Hepatitis B vaccine also prevents against Hepatitis D virus infection. Since there is no Hepatitis B virus infection, the Hepatitis D cannot complete its life cycle and hence there is no Hepatitis D virus infection. 
the goal of the treatment is to cure hepatitis b to make hepatitis b surface antigen unavailable to hepatitis d virus hepatitis d virus requires hepatitis b surface antigens to complete the life cycle and form new virions treatment in case of liver cirrhosis and chronic liver failure is only liver transplant so this concludes our discussion about hepatitis d virus if you have any questions do let us know in the comment section thank you